Welcome back, folks. I'm Tommy O'Brien, joined by Basil Chapman this morning. We got markets up in positive territory. Dow Jones up 118 right now. S&P is positive by 13. NASDAQ positive by 51. Basil just amusingly were saying maybe, you know, politics and, and Powell in front of Congress. He's going to get some questions. And I see the headline coming across CNBC. Fed Chief Powell says he would not resign if asked by President Trump. So they're going to hit him with a bunch of good questions. And I'm sure he saw that one coming. That's an easy one in terms of getting prepared. Um, but speaking of getting prepared, talking about currencies, markets, let's go over to our man Teddy Kegs at from forex-trading-unlock.com. We talk to Teddy about currencies, what's going on in the market every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Teddy Kegsack, good morning. Morning, Tommy. Good to see you, guys. Good to see you as well, man. So, what uh, we got a lot going on this week with the dollar pulling back a week, uh, a bit right now, of course, with Chairman Powell, like we were just talking about um, in front of Congress today and tomorrow. What are you looking at in terms of the currencies as we have kind of two days of Fed action? We got FOMC minutes today as well. And then we also have a, a bond auction going on today from the government as well. Lots going on out there. There is, there is. We have uh, the numbers this week, today, tomorrow, and Friday are. Uh not too uh, too much of a concern, but we do have the CPI and the PPI coming out Thursday and Friday. Definitely. So I, I think that unless there's any really big skew away from expectations, those probably aren't going to cause much of a jump in the market, you know, for the currencies or interest rates. Sure. So, um, but I think the Fed uh, minutes today is something to watch out for. So um, we know that the, the dovish stance of the Fed is in place. Uh, as far as Powell um, testifying also in front of Congress, uh, I think you're going to start to have some questions about uh, a potential currency war. Uh, there's been rumblings by Trump to, uh, you know, push the Fed a little bit and say, hey, we need to devalue the dollar like the other currencies have been by other countries in some fashion. So uh, that has come to the light over the past few days with him pushing it. So I think that you're probably going to see some questions um, to Powell being put, you know, as to whether or not he's for that, against that. You know, um, I don't think that the short-term sell-off right now in the dollar is because of any of those rumblings. I think it's more of kind of just a corrective nature and, uh, you know, pretty much, I mean, if you look at, for instance, the, uh, the U.S. dollar yen or uh, the U.S. dollar Swiss, they've been trending for a while. So it's kind of time for them to have a little bit of a short-term correction, dollar weakness. Yeah, I was taking a look at the Swiss. We talk about that. I know you like to follow that. Can you walk us through that parity again for those that don't listen and what you look for? Because we have the Swiss. What's that right now? Just under parity, like nine nine eight nine. I have it up here. Uh, yes, and actually, it's that's interesting level to talk about, especially right now, because about a month ago, uh, the market had uh, been it rallied up to parity. It had fallen below it, and it looked like it wanted to actually hold, and especially with the news that was in place at the time, it looked like there was a dollar rally going on. And even though it was going against the other currencies, the Swiss, it failed. Uh, now, we've made established a uh, newer lower low on the daily chart, and as of the past week and a half, there's been a really nice rally up to about this 98 half to 99 cent level. Uh, this is where I think we're running out of gas. Parity would be um, and this is where we're, the, the currency war rumblings and what the Fed will do is going to be very interesting over the next couple of days, Tommy. I think that if the dollar strength really prevails and is present in the market, the bulls are going to take out these the recent highs, they're going to reverse gears, and they're going to make a play for parity, which is a psychological level for um, the market for a lot of traders. But it's also a balancing point because the Swiss – is one of your most secure, safest currencies out there. It's always when the dollar's not flight to quality, the Swiss is. You know, when there's geopolitical sure. action going on. You know, now the Iranian thing has been kind of quiet for the past couple of weeks. Um, obviously, that can flare up. I think that short term, we have a couple, especially today. Today's signals are going to be in place for the euro, the pound, and for the yen. Uh, if you look at the, uh, like we just mentioned, the Swiss. We have a uh, short-term sell signal. If they settle about where they're at or lower today, I think you're going to see the market break for the next couple sessions in the next week, which would mean it's the, the dollar has been riding its highs. It's time for a little bit of a correction, profit-taking move, um, which would coincide with the news. I don't know if it's a direct correlation, but I think it's the perfect storm to have a little bit of a correction. And the same would occur with the euro, U.S. dollar. If you look at the trade today, it's like a balloon underwater. Like it started out today just slightly positive, and now it's encompassed the body of yesterday's trading, the body of uh, 
uh, Monday's trading, and it's also also creeping up into Friday's body, which it really had sold off pretty yeah. sharply. So, so that being said, I think that uh, are were those moves overdone and exacerbated? Perhaps um, are these just corrective, you know, moves for the short term? Perhaps. Uh, but I think that the signals, though, that will be set today, like, for instance, if the Euro-U.S. dollar settles about where it's at right now, that's a bullish engulfing pattern, probably setting a trend for the next couple days, couple sessions at least. Um, the same with the Swiss. And then we also have the U.S. dollar yen, which is also uh, um, possibly setting up for a nice little slide as well. And that could make sense just uh, fundamentally in terms of if that trend begins on Powell's remarks and he carries that message through today and tomorrow and the market just is kind of digesting that same type of action, then it could hold true that, you know, that he's because he's going to be ever present today and tomorrow, I assume, in the in the. Um, headlines with right. prepared right. remarks and then question and answer that uh, will make headlines, I'm sure, as you know, I'm seeing them pop across my screen right now. Right. And I think that unless he says something that's actually where he's like going against it, where he's four dollar strength, like outwardly saying, I'm protectionist the dollar, I want to maintain dollar strength. That would be the only thing that I would see would reverse gears off of these potential sell signals and buy signals today, you know. Um, and I don't think he's going to come out and say that. I think that if anything, he'll say we still need things need to remain to be seen. What's going to happen? But we're going to maintain a dovish stance and not necessarily protective of the dollar, but probably not looking to devalue like you know the president has been kind of hammering for the past couple of days, you know. Yeah. So. And that's also for our economy, too. Think about if we do have a short-term currency war, not a long-term one, but just a couple things to get things moving and get the dollar weakening. Short-term, our exports obviously do better, yep. our, our services. So that's good for our economy in the short run. Um, I don't think it's preemptive. I think it's more of a, if you can't come to terms with the tariffs, you know, it's a way of saying, hey, um, if you can't make a decision and come to the table with us somewhere and find some middle ground, we're going to do this and force your hand another way. Yeah. No, it's, it's right in the mix for sure. So, uh, and how about the pound, if we could jump over? Because I got a chart up oh, there, the pound. Man, talk about some volatility. That's, that's the one that's really tough, Tommy, because, I mean, <laughs> talk, talk about trying to not catch a falling knife, right? Yeah. I mean, Here. this is just, uh, I mean, since March and April, man, 133 to now 125, and even just since um, over the last month, right? Even since June 24th. But the Brits do have it's, their own problems. So oh, that's they do, so they for do. sure. Yes. They do, for sure. They're now, dollar strength, If, for instance, let's just say that dollar weakness, rather, comes into the market. I don't know if that's going to change things for the pound. You may see a, like, let's say, for instance, that there is a dollar weakness that happens and we see a big rally in the euro, gets back up to 114, 115. Yeah. And say we see, um, you know, the, the U.S. dollar yen and the, and the Swiss coincide with it. I don't know if the pound would yeah. be the pound be the That depends what's happening and, and if Boris is prime minister yet and everything going on, yes. right? Teddy, I wish we had more time. Thanks so much, man. We look forward to next week. Folks, forex-trading-unlocked.com. Check it out.